Good morning, dear uh, colleagues. I'm happy to present you uh, our data on this step, uh, especially um, many um, papers yesterday was, uh, were devoted to this issue. I will go, go, go to speak about seasonal migration and subsistence systems. Here on the map you can see that green color marks the vast Eurasian step, but I'm going to speak about the present the data from the pilot area, which is the step between low Volga and low Don area. Um, since uh, the analyth analytic period, uh, pastoralists began to uh, exploit uh, and occupy uh, uh, this area, and we look at this uh, culture as uh, the um, as they, uh, we look at the economy of those um, pastoralists as the adaptive system, and um, um, one of the main components is the food acquisition system, the system of grassland seasonal use, and population movements. And uh, we can work with asset markets of the population movements. Uh, um, uh, looking at those issues. So the main issues to be addressed in this presentation um, are the following. Uh, I would like to obtain information on Bronze Age human and animal dietary intake based on the stable isotopes, uh, uh, to obtain information on human and animal biography through, through, uh, through the strontium isotopes and to reconstruct population movements across the pilot area. Uh, for many years, the objects of our research were human and animal bones and plants uh, from archaeological context. And, of course, it is very important uh, to have the bioavailable reference samples. Here, just uh, uh, the reminding of the relative uh, um, chronology of the cultures. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak about those cultures and just to um, remind you the time frame for those cultures. This is very important. When we speak about uh, the uh, step, uh, we have to understand what does it mean, step, because um, you notice that step issue is very popular, and uh, uh, environment provides a lot of understanding when we have uh, uh, the isotope value available. And step uh, uh, is uh, the variety of the landscape, and variety of the different uh, um, pastures, winter, summer, spring, and uh, um, from the beginning, it was evident for us, for us we have to understand the uh, beginning of the food chain. And uh, that is why for many years we um, um, uh, built the um, baseline for interpreting stable asset of data obtained from uh, uh, human and animal samples. That is wh why for already for 10 years uh, we collected plants from different uh, pastures located uh, in the Eurasian steppe. Uh, and uh, for the um, uh, comparison, we also started uh, uh, to take uh, s uh, samples from the um, natural pastures from the Caucasus. That is why at the moment we have a lot of isotope values for contemporary plants. We have the real uh, environmental, uh, isotope environmental context, and you can see here that uh, plants, um, um, plant isotopes are very variable. We could speak about C4, C3, mixed C3, C4 plants, and C4, uh, uh, C4 um, arid plants. But it was also very important uh, to understand, does uh, uh, this kind of variation exist in the past, in the Bronze Age? And uh, due to the uh, aridity, um, um, the special uh, aridity um, soil, <clears throat> we have a lot of plant uh, f fruit seeds preserved in the graves and the settlements. They date back to the Bronze Age because, of course, we dated uh, a lot of um, such samples, and again, you can see we have a large variations in the stable isotope values, uh, which date in the plants and seeds, uh, which date back to the Bronze Age, and we also have C4 plants, uh, C3 plants with high value of nitrogen. Um, so it is evident from this grant. So uh, <clears throat> we have a real good uh, um, uh, background isotope background, and you can see that through the pilot area of the research, we were able to distinguish different um, part, uh, different uh, pastures, um, and uh, we were able to identify special um, isotope values for the coastline pastures, for the arid pastures, uh, for the foothills mountain pastures. So, then the next issue uh, was to understand the productivity of pasture and seasonal data, because we also uh, have uh, the proofs now that uh, isotope values of pasture plants varies due to the seasons and to the climate conditions. And um, for many years uh, we tried to find uh, the settlements, and now uh, at least we were able to find seasonal campsites, and the location of the seasonal camps also um, needs, uh, um, um, uh, is based on um, 
some needs which pastorates uh, uh, had to bear in mind, uh, water, uh, productivity of pastures, and uh, uh, that is why also we started to, to look at the productivity of the pastures. Of course, it's contemporary data, but this productivity level also helped us to uh, understand the interpretation uh, and to give us more proofs uh, and more ideas about how could we interpret uh, the asset of data. And uh, economic background is also very important when we try to understand the variations in the isotopes. Uh, um, it is very important to understand that when people begin to settle in this step, they begin to develop a special economic uh, strategy, which is um, the main principle of this strategy is the rotation of pastures. And uh, when people begin to uh, live in this step, they had to understand the, uh, the productivity and uh, the capacity of the winter pastures as well. So we have now uh, quite a lot of isotope uh, results. So, uh, we uh, can uh, interpret the diet system of the humans and the animal ratio as well as the mobility. And I'm going to present you our data based on, uh, well, just uh, this is the reminder of the um, uh, stable isotope um, fractionations um, in uh, the plant, humans, uh, uh, and animals. And uh, for many years, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Janet, who really inspired me to collect a lot of uh, samples, and now we have a quite um, detailed map for the area under the, uh, of the research, just to give you examples of our comparative uh, background. So I'm going to present you results. It's not just the case study. Uh, but it's very important because many people here do, uh, during uh, uh, yesterday's presentation, they use those cultures uh, for, uh, their, um, in their models. So this is the Neolithic culture. We, are able, uh, we were able to uh, work not only with the uh, graves, but uh, recently we uncovered several um, uh, summer campsites. And we were able to look at the stable asset of, of humans and animals, and you can see uh, human um, diet, uh, uh, human stable isotopes uh, uh, are characterized by quite a uh, high value of nitrogen. So those uh, people came from quite a um, uh, specific environment, probably coastline areas. And uh, the variations in the um, animal um, bone is also show that those animals were pasturing in different pastures. But uh, the more impressive was uh, the uh, new strontium isotope uh, values. Um, um, we analyzed three uh, um, Neolithic uh, humans and uh, the uh, variations of strontium isotopes in their tooth correlates with the variations of uh, bioavailable samples which come from the low Don area and the coastline of Azov Sea. But if we, when we looked at the strontium isotopes in horses, we don't know because this uh, uh, horse date back to the Neolith period. Uh, I can't say uh, was this horse, uh, to the, were those two horses um, uh, wild or domesticated, but those horses were um, um, born in, not in the place where uh, we uh, uh, took those samples. So at least at the moment, uh, when we uh, tried to understand the population movements during the analytic period, we can produce the model according to which people uh, from uh, uh, people lived uh, um, uh, nearby coastline of Azov and Black Sea in the long, long, uh, in the large settlements. But when they begin to develop the pastoral economy, they begin to uh, use, uh, to, to, uh, they begin to develop a new strategy. strategy. They had to uh, find new pastures, and they begin uh, to penetrate very slowly to the open steppe. And they did it only uh, during the summer, because we have seasonality data for graves and uh, uh, new uncovered sites. There were only summer camp sites. And uh, so uh, we speak about, uh, the, uh, when we speak about the, uh, their mobility, the mobile level was not uh, quite high. But they began to move to the steppes and return back during the winter. My cop culture. Uh, is also very interesting. Uh, we uh, analyzed quite a lot of um, animal data, and it was evident that the uh, mycop uh, animals, they were pastured in different pastures. And uh, at least uh, at the moment, we could say that um, two pasture systems were used during the mycop culture. One, was, uh, one system was located in the foothills, uh, um, and uh, uh, the other was uh, um, located in the steppe. But uh, um, and the uh, variations, uh, uh, um, and the stable asset of values in humans who lived in this step uh, 
show that uh, those people, they also uh, they had to be quite mobile. They consumed uh, different types of uh, plants, uh, but people uh, of my culture who lived in the foothills, their um, diet was uh, very monotonous. But uh, and uh, when we look at uh, the strontium isotopes, we don't have much data in um, in our database. But we could see that there are quite a lot of uh, Maiko people who lived in the foothills of the North Caucasus, and uh, they are buried in the same place. Those people they were not mobile. M mobile. But uh, we still have uh, some uh, uh, graves uh, of which are Maiko graves in the open steppe. What does it mean? Um, we uh, assume that uh, mycop, uh, steppe mycop graves appeared not at the beginning of the mycop culture, but uh, when mycop uh, culture was uh, prosperous in the Caucasus. And uh, uh, the first map, map shows that those mycop people, they were not mobile. But um, the um, prosperity of the economy led them to find the new places for living. And we, uh, we call this mycop uh, culture colonization. Those people, they were quite mobile. Uh, they the graves of those people were quite rich, but this colonization was not of success. People returned back and they settled uh, um, only in um, a small area near the delta of Don River. So uh, uh, my Cop culture people were mobile only for a short period. Yamna culture, famous Yamna culture, and we have uh, hundreds and thousands of graves of Yamna culture. And uh, uh, recently we were able to uncover uh, seasonal Yamna culture uh, sites. And, but when we look at the Yamna diet, you could see quite a lot of variations. Some Yamna people uh, diet was C4 based, uh, mixed C3, C4, and C3 based. So it means that those Yamna people um, uh, they uh, consume different uh, components, uh, different food with different isotope values. The same could be said about, uh, about the animals. Those young animals, they pasture in different pastures. And uh, when we look at the strontium isotope values, we could see some, uh, almost all young um, humans, uh, which were analyzed from the pilot era, they were born in this step and they were buried in this step. But we still, well, but we um, have two outliers. We could assume that those two uh, humans, one man and one male, uh, female, they were born uh, somewhere to the south. And uh, uh, when we look uh, at the mobility of the Yamna culture for, from this pilot era, we don't have any archaeological evidences of long uh, migrations of, uh, from this area. Those people, they um, um, developed and supported uh, the rotation of uh, pastures, and uh, they organized only short distance movements. Katakomne culture uh, population uh, um, was developed during the uh, beginning of the eradication of climate. We have uh, thousands of kurgans and thousands of uh, graves, and now we have um, uh, summer uh, uh, seasonal uh, campsites. And uh, um, these uh, uh, <coughs> The seasonality of the campsites uh, supports uh, the idea of the uh, system of grassland seasonal use, which was proposed uh, many years ago, but uh, that seasonality data was based on the graves. Now we have uh, uh, data uh, which come from the uh, campsites. And again, if we, when we look at the uh, diet system of the Katakomne people, uh, these are uh, people who lived in the Caucasus, in the foothills, and you, you could see that uh, the uh, um, uh, stable hazard value uh, show, uh, shows that uh, the diet of those people were um, based, or were C3 based, but people who lived in this step uh, uh, show uh, variations in the uh, diet components. Th this is because uh, um, of their movements. And the more impressive uh, um, e um, is the animal as values. You can see the, the quite a large variations. For example, this is the variations in the um, sheep uh, animal uh, uh, bones, sheep um, bones, and you can see that those sheep, uh, they uh, were pastured in different pastures. And uh, this uh, strontium this isotope data also confirmed uh, um, a more high level of mobility of the catacombne people. Some catacombne humans were born and buried in this step, but we have more outliers. And uh, from the recently uncovered catacombne uh, summer camps, um, we found, uh, um, we found uh, a sheep um, horse uh, tooth 
and uh, you could see it's interesting, all three horses were uh, born not in the uh, local steppe, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the place where I'm excavating. Um, um, one uh, horse was probably born um, in the coastline of Dagestan because uh, these Tonson values correlate with the, uh, those bioavailable um, samples, and other probably in the Caucasus. So the level of uh, the mobility of uh, the catacombne culture uh, was very high because because uh, of the deterior uh, deterioration of the climate and the development of the economy. And the last sample uh, uh, is the La La culture. The existence of this culture uh, correlates, uh, coincides with the chaperonization. Those people who left us uh, these collective graves uh, had to move uh, five kilometers uh, to the north uh, where they were um, unfortunately killed and buried. So uh, those people, they tried to find new pastures. They tried to survive and they had to um, move uh, from uh, the Caucasus to this steppe. So we have quite a lot of uh, isotopic data, uh, and uh, I described you these archaeological um, evidences. Uh, however, we um, should try and understand if uh, we, what we think is uh, possible uh, was true in a real situation. That is why I think that it is very important when we try to uh, reconstruct, uh, um, to check the, our reconstruction based on the archaeological answer of data. We have to understand, does this system existed in the past? And so that is why it, were, it, it is very important to go back to the ethnography. This is Karl Mix who moved to this uh, pilot area of our research in the 17th century. And uh, their economy, their, the economic strategy of those people was based on the seasonal rotation. This is the map. Uh, this is the uh, map from the State Historical Museum collection. And it, uh, this is uh, it's dates back to the 19th century. And it shows the um, uh, different type of pastures, winter and uh, um, uh, summer. And uh, the area from which a lot of samples uh, are obtained, this is the Remontna area. And people uh, from this area uh, used uh, the uh, uh, winter pastures uh, uh, until the end of the 60s. And even modern uh, uh, pastoralists uh, who originated from the Caucasus, they, of course, they, f uh, they don't uh, know all about uh, stable isotopes, archaeology, and uh, ancient uh, strategy of the pastoralists. But still, uh, they understand the necessity to use uh, different pastures. And even uh, during the day or different seasons, they know uh, where they had to move with their flocks during the day or during the week. So the conclusions. The exploitation of the steppe environment was based on mobile uh, lifestyle of people involved in seasonal moves within the exploited landscape scape. Pastoral economic success led to formation of small mobile pastoral groups whose aim was to search for and exploit a rentless beyond the nearby areas. The rotational principle of pasture use formed the basis of uh, the new subsistence systems and seasonal migrations. Isotope data demonstrate variations in the mobility rate among the Bronze Age cultures and suggest uh, strong reasons forcing uh, population groups hit the road. And those reasons were first economic reasons, because uh, uh, we don't, uh, we can't say about political reasons uh, when we speak about the Bronze Age. We even uh, can't speak about social uh, reasons, because uh, a lot of work should be done to understand the social reasons of that kind of movements. But when we look at the economy and the uh, specific uh, conditions, uh, um, um, pasture conditions, climate conditions of this step, it is uh, uh, very um, easy to uh, understand uh, the reasons of those um, movements. The reasons were economical reasons and the, this uh, strongly developed uh, economic strategy which was based on the rotation of the pastures. Thank you.